Dear brothers and sisters, on this 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time, there are three important words, among so many other words that I would like us to think about. The first one is discipleship. The second one is commitment. And the third one is freedom. In our gospel passage today, we see that Jesus was heading towards Jerusalem. Of course, we know what happens in Jerusalem. Prophets are executed in Jerusalem. So Jesus has a perfect knowledge as God. He has perfect knowledge of the past, the present, and the future. So he knew already what was awaiting him in Jerusalem. He knew that the crucifixion was awaiting him in Jerusalem. But there's one word that Luke uses in the passage we have today. What's that word? Resolute. I was trying to check the meaning of resolute, and I discovered that to be resolute means to be determined, to be adamant, to have a perfect resolve. That you want to really do this is all about determination. So Jesus was already determined to go to Jerusalem. But why? To save us, to redeem us, to set us free from the captivity of sin, to set us free from the slavery of the devil. That's why he was going to Jerusalem, to give us a new life. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, he experienced rejection. But I'm going to tell you something that Jesus did, which should be part of our life as disciples. The Jews and the Samaritans were enemies. You can find out this in John chapter 4, verse 9. I'm sure you remember the encounter between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. A typical Jew will not like to pass through Samaria on his way to Jerusalem, even though the way that passes through Samaria is the shortest way between Galilee and Jerusalem. But because of their enmity, a typical Jew would prefer to go around to assess Jerusalem than to pass through Samaria. So the two things that Jesus did today to teach us how disciples should behave, the number one is that Jesus, by passing through Samaria, something a typical Jew would not do. By passing through Samaria, Jesus teaches us today the importance of friendship. So Jesus basically extended the hand of friendship to the Samaritans. They rejected that. Secondly, Jesus extended, you know, as his presence, he extended to them the gift of reconciliation. They rejected that. Another important thing we should learn from the attitude of Jesus on his journey to Jerusalem is how to be disciples who are tolerant, disciples who appreciate other people, disciples who can forgive. Now, before this time, we remember the encounter between James and John and, of course, about the man who was exorcising. They came to Jesus and said, we saw a man, you know, chasing out demons in your name, and we wanted to stop him. And Jesus said, no, don't do that. Today again, we see that James and John said to Jesus, at that moment that Jesus was rejected by the Samaritans, James and John said to Jesus, allow us to call fire from heaven to destroy the Samaritans, to destroy your enemies. And the Bible said that Jesus rebuked them. Jesus said, don't do that. Which means that as disciples, we should not think in that way. We should not become people who are vengeful. Disciples should not engage themselves in vengeance or retaliation. Rather, disciples should learn how to forgive and to move on. If you look at this gospel passage, the Bible tells us that after Jesus was rejected, he did not reject himself. Rather, he continued his journey to Jerusalem. Now, there's an irony here, which I would like us to think about, that Samaria will actually be the first place that the early Christians were going to settle during the persecution. When the early Christians were persecuted and were chased out from Jerusalem, the first place they settled was in Samaria. Discipleship is relationship. It's actually a call to relationship. So Jesus invites us to become his disciples because he wants us to become intimate with him. He wants us to become friends with him. Now, as he continued his journey to Jerusalem, he met the first person. The first person was very courageous, very generous, and very enthusiastic. 
when he came to Jesus, he said to Jesus, I want to follow you. And we see in this point another thing we should learn as disciples, and that is honesty. Honesty is the best policy. When this man expressed his desire to become a follower of Jesus, Jesus was very honest and sincere with him by telling him that being a Christian is not a guarantee that you will be exempted from problems. Being a Christian does not mean that your life will all be roses and sweet. No, Jesus told him clearly that to be a Christian is to embrace a life of sacrifice. It's not a life of relaxation. It's not a life of comfort. It's actually a life of discomfort. Jesus was very clear to him. In the second encounter, it was Jesus who called this man to follow him. We see the response of this man. He said to Jesus, allow me to go and bury my father. Let me say clearly that we should not take this literal. Of course, his father did not die. But he was talking about his filial duties to his family. He was talking about giving attention to his family. The issue here about the second encounter is all about priority. This man said, I want to go and bury my father. And Jesus said, allow the dead to bury the dead. Now, Jesus is basically inviting us through this man to make God the number one, to put God first, to give God the first attention. Jesus is not asking us to hate our families or to throw away our family. Jesus is basically asking us to put God first. And after we place God as the primary and the preeminent person in our lives, then we can talk about our families. Actually, we cannot be good people in our families if God is not in us. So God should be the first. Now in the third encounter, this man said to Jesus, I would like to go and say goodbye to my family. There are so many of us who are like this man, because actually we see ourselves in these three persons. We have this spirit of procrastination. Many of us may be afraid of commitment because of fears, because of anxiety, because of low self-esteem, because of prejudice, because of so many things we may have experienced in the past, like personal failures. Many of us are afraid to try something again because of our ugly experience in the past. And that's why many of us are trapped in the past. We cannot detach ourselves from the past. We cannot say goodbye to the past. We cannot break away from the past. And Jesus is basically inviting us to do this. And this is what we see in the response of Elisha in the first reading. You see that spirit of detachment. Nobody can become a good disciple. Nobody can become a good Christian. Nobody can become a good follower of Christ if the person does not intentionally break away from the past. It can be break away from the past ideologies. It can be a break away from our past orientations. It can be a break away from our past vices. It can be a break away from our past, you know, life of toxicity. But the fact is that without detachment, we cannot become real followers of Christ. It could be detachment also from material things, from intellectual stuff, and so many other things. As we see in the life of Elisha, he was able to break away from the past. And that's why he became a very effective prophet. St. Paul tells us in the second reading today about freedom. As disciples, we are invited to be free. To be free does not mean to live the way you want. Rather, to be free means to allow love to control your thoughts, your words, and your actions. It means living in the spirit. If we live in the flesh, that we allow our emotions and feelings to control us, we will not make good disciples. Good disciples are those who are free. Free in the sense that we are controlled by the spirit of love, by the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it means to be free. To be free means to do the will of God. To be free means to touch the lives of our neighbors in a positive way. That's what it means to be free. So remember, we can also be committed in our relationship by allowing love to be the center of our relationship. L, we have to listen to one another. 
or we have to be open-minded to the suggestions, opinions, and uniqueness of the other person. V is veracity. Veracity stands for honesty, sincerity. We should stop being mga sinungaling or bakakun. We should learn to be honest. We should learn to be sincere. And the E is empathy. We should learn to walk and journey together as people who love one another. I wish you a blessed Sunday and may God bless you.